Auriez-vous envie de savoir comment on peut vraiment s'amuser avec une marionnette Voici une leçon particulière avec l'Australien Neville Tranter, le roi de la mopette. Dans la tradition subversive de la marionnette à gaine, qui s'enfile comme un gant et n'a pas la langue dans sa poche, il ose revisiter les grandes figures de notre histoire avec un humour noir ravageur. Vous êtes prêts It's not fair. It's just not fair. Listen, you enjoy acting, don't you? Of course I do. Then stop complaining and just play the role. Well, who are you playing then? Heinz Linger, his servant. Suit you. <laughs> Why can't I play the role of Goebbels? Psychologically much more interesting. And physically with his handicap, no one would believe you. Why not? What's wrong with me? The puppets can play all roles. But to bring a puppet to life on the stage, I mean that the audience believes that it's alive. To do that magic, you have to be very technical. That's one way. What's the difference? Which, which is more dramatic? Which one has the second, second one? one. And what, why is it more dramatic? When he does this. It's the rhythm. Yes, it's the rhythm. But when he stops. He shows us a different. But what's he doing? But what's he doing when he stops? Looking around. Yes. Yes. Thinking. Yes. Thinking. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's what makes the puppets come to life. I'll show you. Zeno. Zeno. <laughs> no. I've given many, many workshops and I love to teach. In the beginning I was starting to train as a teacher and then I stopped because I became an actor instead. And, um, when I act with my puppets, when I work with them, I don't think of it as a thing. I see them as actors, the greatest actors in the world. And I understood very quickly that I could use the fact that me being next to the puppet as a human actor, there were many more possibilities of doing dramatic situations. So I have been trying for the last 35 years, experimenting, trying to find out where, are, where is the edge, how far can I go in this relationship between me as the actor and the puppet, this, this between the two of us, or th three of us even. Shall we now play a scene with a puppet? As long as I don't have to play the puppet. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I don't know, what did you say? What did he say? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> Why does he keep going there? <laughs> What's he doing there? <laughs> <laughs> they're my legs! 
Jesus. <laughs> Make him stop. David, that's enough. <laughs> That didn't happen overnight because it took me a long time, for instance, to have the courage to be a character next to the puppet. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about this. David, come here. Come here. Here. <laughs> but it's very double because I'm the one doing it. And yet I also believe in the character, totally. Otherwise, I can't play it. Master. Master? Just kidding. It's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, it's so funny. <sighs> Most of the plays, I'm serving the puppet, giving the illusion that the puppets have all the power. Say good evening. <coughs> In some plays, I play the dominant character. I'm. I have more power over the puppets, so-called. This is my show. And I will not allow one puppet, not one puppet, to get the upper hand. You understand me? Absolutely. You come in here uninvited. Oh, sorry. You throw your pregnant self onto me. Yes. You are egotistical. No, no. Outspoken no, and rude, no, a pain in the neck. Well, it is certainly an important human characteristic to want to manipulate others. That's for me part of the human condition. And I feel a sort of responsibility because I've discovered that these instruments, the puppets, can show that, then I should let them show that. May I? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I want to begin this morning about showing emotions. So if he wants to be happy, how would I do that? <laughs> yes, up and up and open. Open, yes. The Sun Man. <laughs> okay, another emotion. Fear. Fear, okay. If he's afraid of me. I mean, he has to see me first, mm -hmm. right? Eye contact, and then, then. And close yourself. Yeah. Mm. See, he's moving away from me, and it's absolutely clear in his body language. Yeah. Think of animals. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Think of a snake mm -hmm. with a mouse. Cats. Cats. Also. Or cat with a mouse. They never lose eye contact. If he's angry at me, what's the energy of anger? I'll show you. If I do it slowly, like this. No, uh, no, that's not anger. No. Okay, but if he... Oh, like yeah. oh, yes, yeah. yes. See? And is he bigger than me now? See? Yeah. Physically? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity. 
curiosity. Okay, I yeah. wanted to show you this right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For instance, this. Discovering his own hand. The difference between if I do it as an actor is I can look at my own hand like this, yeah? And, but it's not the same. Because the difference is what we're seeing, it's the innocence. It's like a baby. Yeah. It's like a baby, a child. And so what we are witnessing is a human being, because he represents a human being, discovering his hand for the first time. And that's a sensation really, and enjoying it. <laughs> That's for me what makes the puppets so great. They can show the human condition in all its aspects, everything, all aspects, the dark side of the human being, the light side, the funny side, the absurd side, the grotesque side, everything. For one moment I thought you were going to say, yeah, yeah, mein Führer, yeah! Ja! Nein, Gott, nein! Is it yeah, nein, nein! Yeah, ja, nein, 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 yeah, ja, ja! Nein, 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 Dr. Gobbles! Anyone listening to this conversation would find it completely absurd. The characters are all archetypes. Something that people in the audience immediately recognize. Let us hope, mein Führer, that no one is listening. Oh, oh. I didn't catch that one. For instance, that is the parent, that is the child, that is the king. You have to recognize it instantly. You see it and you think, oh, I know that. C'est magnifique, n'est-ce pas? Bien sûr, Monsieur le Roi. Louis, je m'appelle Louis, comme Louis Armstrong. In all my archetypes, there's always one character who plays innocence. And that has to do with the, the dramaturgy. The moon. The moon is beautiful. You, you, you should have the moon. I will give you the moon. No, no, please. No, that, that, that's not necessary. It, it's impossible. Just talk to me. I like that. Just talk, talk to me. Even if it's tragedy, comedy, or whatever, I always try to find the pain of the character. And as an actor, it's always interesting when you play the character is to try and not show that pain. That you do everything not to show it. And that's what makes the characters really interesting because they're trying to hide what, what pain they have inside. Just when I think you're mine, we try a different line. And baby, what can I do? I For instance, how do I play Ava Brown? Well, let her be drunk, because if she's drunk, maybe then she'll reveal herself. But why is she drunk? She's attractive, young, she's in the bunker, and of course she knows that the end is coming, that she will never, ever have children. No problem. They will come. Absolutely. Herr Goebbels, would you like to... I make all my own characters, all my puppets, because it's my world that I'm creating. So I have to see them and then make them, and bring them to life. Dance with me. <laughs> so for me, it's very important how they look like, how big they are, uh, how they move, what, even what colors they have, or, or what materials they have, everything. Everything is co chosen. It's magic time. La la. La, 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 la. Some plays, uh, la, the characters are more cartoon-like or a caricature, never realistic. You can make them as grotesque as you want. 
Nein. <lacht> okay, okay, okay. Concentration. Concentration. Mm, 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 mm. For instance, the death, I made based on the, the South American view of death, he's colorful, he's gold and, and very big and glittery, a real show figure, as a bad magician. <laughs> <laughs> why, Zeno? Yes. Why do the audience? Yes. Yes. Look at you, at me, when you're talking. Why? Yes. <laughs> Can you explain why? Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, well, of course you know that he here is doing the voice, right? My voice. <laughs> but if it's if he's doing it well, you're looking at me and not at him. <laughs> and uh, that's probably because I have a bigger mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm it's okay. Is it? <laughs> I'm not um, a ventriloquist, so this movement is much bigger than this movement here, my mouth. So, and our eyes always go to. <laughs> when, I, when you say a word, word, your mouth, my mouth, closes, closes, one, one, fraction, fraction, of a second, of a second, Later. Later? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. Manamana. 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 I came to Holland in 1978. And at that moment in Amsterdam, there was a festival called the Festival of Fools. And that was the biggest alternative street theater festival in the world. And the reactions to the puppets here in Holland were so wonderful, I thought, I'll stay here. I come from Australia. My father was one of 14 children, my mother one of five. So, and all working class people working in a coal mine, farmers. And I'm glad because I know if I'd stayed in Australia, I don't think I would have done what I've done. I met this elderly couple in Queensland, Bill and Barbara Turnbull. I helped them build up the stage and I saw the puppets. And after that show, my decision to become a puppeteer was immediate. This is Barbara. She forced me <laughs> to find my own style. Oh, God. <laughs> it's from 1975. Um, I think, maybe, was I 20? I haven't looked in this album for maybe 20 years. <laughs> this was my very first puppet for adults. Huh? So my first piece was a string puppet piece, yeah. Here, here's the first Matilda. Matilda was also um, in an old person's home. And it's a monologue, actually. She's waiting for an angel to come and take her. She's waiting and waiting and he doesn't come. So it's not her time yet, so she has to go back inside. <laughs> This Matilda now is 35 years later. I've sort of redone it again, but with everything I've learned in between, not only as a puppeteer, but maybe as a human being as well. I'm not the pretty girl I used to be. <laughs> so I've always had dealt with the theme of death right from the beginning. 
because I felt instinctively that puppets could deal with this in a wonderful way. And then he turns to him, he says, come, come. And it's this moment, I have to have to think, what's their attitude, what's their... You uh, understand what I mean? Where shall we start then? Let's just rehearse this moment first. Okay. I think it's time to raise the... the lodging prices. I think it's time to raise the lodging prices. Always look on the bright side of death. When, when you take that final terminal breath. They, they have something crazy. Yeah. I really like that they have this, this surreal bit. Okay. You, you do that first little bit of text here. Okay. Let me watch. So you want it with the... Uh, we do it again. I just want to see one thing when he says... The old... The old... The weak... And the dying. Who needs them? We do! <laughs> I love working with Tim because he has this fantastic feeling for rhythm. And I found this is a way for me to rehearse so I can see it from the point of view of the audience. And I can see very quickly what works and what does not work. It is a fantastic way of getting right into the heart of a scene. Okay, we do it again. Vim, uh, when Wim comes on, let, just let both of them look at Wim, like this, and follow him, like this, and, and uh, then look, follow him, and then go backwards, like they're going out. It's, it's almost almost the same way they came in. We try it out tonight. One of the main themes for me in Matilda is about letting go. What I want the audience to experience is how do you do that? And how do we all deal with that problem, letting go? And now? Because the puppet is a, it's, its own thing, it's its own entity, it has its own life. So we can project our and thoughts and emotions onto this creature as an audience. I trust the puppet. I trust them completely. They accept me for who I am and don't judge me. But somehow I feel... Uh, I feel safe with the puppet. But I'm not, I'm not sentimental, not at all. Once the puppet is finished and I play, then, then, then it's a thing. It, I, it, it doesn't, it's not alive anymore. In, in my mind also not, it's, it's finished, that's it. I don't talk to my puppets at home or no, 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 no. Tonight I have watched you very carefully and I've seen what you do with your puppets how you use them, abuse them, misuse them, how you man 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 manipulate. Exactly. <laughs> what I want to say is this. Just like Frank, you choose your victim carefully. <laughs> you create a relationship. <laughs> you make it ever so exciting. <laughs> you promise the world. <laughs> then you get your victim into position. <laughs> Listen, frog. Frisa, 
I am the puppeteer. Yes, I know. And you? Yes, me. You are nothing more. Nothing more. Than mm -hmm. an object. Object to be used. <laughs> Manamana 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 Manamana